Talia received some pretty huge changes last patch, so here's a quick guide on how to play her in the mid lane, which is where she's currently most popular. Talia is a roaming mage with a very high skill ceiling. She's got a unique kit that allows her to be absolutely brutal in the right hands with her burst damage and disruption. Talia has great pick potential, big burst windows, and the ability to get around them out very quickly due to her ultimate and her passive. Talia does take a hell of a lot of practice though, and she really does struggle when she gets behind. Also, if Talia misses her W, she's very easy to take down. Let's start off with Talia's runes, and you're pretty much always going to want to run Electrocute. It adds that extra bit of burst and really helps out securing early kills and winning early trades. Take Taste of Blood for a bit of sustain, Eyeball Collection for some more damage, and finish with Treasure Hunter to really bolster your snowball potential. If you're against a horrendous enemy team comp though with lots of dive, consider taking Ingenious Hunter instead, as this will allow you to use your Zonyas more often. Finish off with the Inspiration Tree second to help out with a bit of sustain through cookies and Time Warp Tonic. For your skill order, you're going to want to max your Q first, as this is your main damaging ability. After that, follow that with your E, and finally finish off with your W. In most lanes, you want to start off with a Corrupting Potion and get that Lost Chapter as soon as possible to start working towards your Mythic, in which you have two main choices. Luden's Tempest gives you extra burst damage, wave clear and movement speed alongside the Scaling Magic Pen. Everfrost is the other option, granting you some extra CC, which allows you to land the rest of your damage easier, and offers some self-peel, which can be crucial against certain mobile matchups. Whichever Mythic you go for though, the next few items will be pretty set in stone for Talia. Grab a Shadow Flame afterwards, then a Zonyas, Rabidans and Void Staff to finish, which will be the core build in the majority of games. There is also quite a few different situational items that you may need to go for on Talia though, which will all depend on enemy team comps, matchups and so on. These are Magi's Soul Stealer, Banshee's Veil, Archangel's Staff, Morella Nomicon and even a Cosmic Drive which can all be fantastic in the right games. Let's move on to matchups now, and against easier lanes you'll be looking to abuse your advantage by playing really aggressive with your Q and poking your enemy as much as possible to try and get them into kill range. Aim to land that WE combo as well as it will deal some really good damage, stun your enemy and allow you to hit them with some more Q damage. Try and trade every single time you have Electrocute up and get those early kills if you can. Talia snowballs exceptionally well, so that's the main goal in easier lanes. In harder lanes though, you're going to need to be a lot more careful. Talia is very vulnerable without her W, so don't go throwing it out willy-nilly and hoping to get picks with it. Instead, save it for self-peeling and combine it with your E to keep yourself protected against enemy all-ins and ganks. You want to try and farm up as efficiently as possible, clearing waves and then seizing any opportunities you can to roam and get a lead elsewhere. Your passive and your ultimate are very strong roaming tools, so use these to bring an advantage back to your lane instead. Talia works really well with any strong early game champions that have reliable CC in their abilities, allowing her to combo and land her WE combo easier. Junglers like Volibear or Rek'Sai or supports like Leona and Pantheon are insane to combo with. Talia also shares unique synergies with allied champions who can utilise her terrain in her ultimate. Poppy, Vayne, Kiana and Nar can all stun enemies against it, which is pretty insane if you can manage to pull it off. So during the lane phase you want to poke and farm at the same time with your Q. Remember that it deals AoE damage so you can easily shove waves and harass enemies at the same time. If you use your Q on your warped ground, it will consume it and throw a single boulder that deals double damage. Try and use this to really poke down your enemies in lane. Trading around Electro Q is a very good way to usually come out on top, so keep your eye on its cooldown and use this often to gain an advantage. Your WE combo or your EW combo deals some very good damage, but it also provides great CC in various ways. You can use it to trade, to look for all-ins, to self-peel for yourself, or even to set up ganks. Don't forget that enemies will be stunned if they dash inside your pebbles, so keep this in mind when you're being ganked or all in. Talia's roaming is absolutely fantastic due to the movement speed she gets from her passive and her semi-global ultimate, which can allow her to cut off teams and really decide those fights in the early game. Try and play around these to really push this champion's potential. In team fights, you're going to be looking to pump out as much damage as possible from your Q from a safe distance, hitting as many targets as possible. You can also look to get a bit closer to land your WE combos as well, but be really careful as without it you're going to be much more vulnerable. Try and time it around allied engage as it's impossible to miss if enemies are already CC'd. You'll need to remember that you are a big focus for the enemy team, so you want to use your W and your E to peel for yourself and play heavily around your flash and Zonya's cooldowns. Talia is a very vulnerable champion and you'll always need to remember this and play around these things to avoid instantly getting taken down. Talia is also really prone to enemy flanks, as when she's fighting, all of her damage output is tunnel visioned in front of her. Therefore, you always want to be mindful of unwarded areas around you. Talking of flanking though, Talia's passive and ultimate make her a fantastic flanker herself, and she can cut off entire teams with her ultimate, forcing them into a pretty horrific fate. Whether it's using this ability to join fights elsewhere, escaping certain death, or splitting teams up in choke points, Talia's ultimate's potential is massive. Let's finish off this Talia guy with a few quick tips. Once you start firing your Q, it'll only go in that direction until the channel is finished. This means you'll need to start predicting enemy movement preemptively. You can use your flash to follow enemies trying to escape it, and you can also continue this ability when you're inside your zonyas. Try to stay near walls as often as possible. This will allow you to use your passive to gain the bonus movement speed, which can be useful in so many different scenarios. Whether it's escaping ganks, setting up fights, dodging skill shots, or even roaming, it really does have a ton of uses. 
Thanks for checking out this short guide on Talia. Hope your next game rocks.